folks, here's a little something I got going that I'd like to share with you since it's been a while since I posted here. So in the meantime, as I'm searching for commercial space here, I'd rather um, do a little bit of work if I can in the meantime. So here's a little concept, a side concept, basically just pointing at what it is, some of the things we're looking at here. So what I've been doing to keep myself busy in the meantime, is I've been conditioning electrodes. So there's a big electrode I built here. So it's all dried up now. Basically all like a wax, basically very hard. So a capacitor essentially. And essentially, I think people when they build electrodes, they do it kind of wrong in a sense of when the wax or the dielectric is in its um, fluid form, it becomes mostly conductive, right? So the whole idea is to feed, you know, a few minutes of super high voltage and condition your electric as it cools down, right? So the people do it at super high voltage for a few minutes, but basically through a low impedance or a dead short because of the electrical path until it dries up. So that's very, it's like a dead short to the power supply. So I don't see personally how that's the most effective way of conditioning an electric. And then, of course, as noted, after a while, they have to recondition and recondition because the electric, after a while, doesn't hold. It's a temporary effect, as good as it is, right? So I decided, let's try and make it more permanent. So my solution is essentially, when I conditioned it, I used a one-wire system. So with the one-wire system, I was able to not short obviously because it's one wire with the diodes giving you a plus and minus with high voltage i was able to then condition this but i let it cool down for a month continuously very slow conditioning process while i let in this case it's a sodium made of silicate gel that hardened so it took a very long time and this became basically and so what i'm getting at is i wanted to f freeze the uh, charge the depolarization essentially in place. So essentially a form of a capacitor that forgets how to um, drain itself essentially. So with that said, of course, a nice 1.1 some volt. So here's my meter over here. I'm gonna just show you. I don't want to keep it on because it, it interferes with the process, but just to show you here. So here's the plus and minus. So I'm gonna show you the plus over minus over here doesn't really matter but minus over here plus over there and i should get about one volt there there it is 1.157 and it, so what's really interesting with this is it keeps holding a charge even if you dead short it essentially it bounces right back up and what i've done is essentially very similar to the peg cell these things have all these AC transients, like spikes in the background at random. I showed this on the scope a while back ago with the peg cell, with the random, what I called AC spikes. Now I decided to take advantage of this now, but when you load it, it basically anything nullifies the effect, right? Because you're DC shorting it. So to avoid that, I basically used the capacitor here, which gives me a buffer, an actual, um, it also isolates the DC and gives you an AC reactive path. So what's really nice about it is this doesn't have to work now to, to, to send the spike across this. So what I've done is I got the voltage, big, big 24X voltage multiplier connected to this. And I'm taking advantage of the spike. And as you see here, this is the spike up to 1.5 volts or so random up and down here. And obviously it's a natural rectifier. And being capacitive here, this actually decouples the plus electrically um, DC. So it's easy to loop it back into the cell. So what you're seeing here is an actual self-breathing system, so to speak, with the fields. And essentially you have one side that spikes and then I'm going to take them. There we go. Meter out of the way here. So what happened is one side excites the other side. And uh, one part is being rectified back into the cell so it responds that way continuously and because there's no dead DC short it doesn't actually trickle down it actually eventually it keeps conditioning itself with its own spike and as the hours go by it goes like 1.158 1.159 you know it eventually keeps going up a little more and a little more because it keeps accumulating all these because it's also a capacitor right so the charge 
keeps building up, but there's no... So this is essentially another variant of using a charge pump, essentially a potential well, and um, just sipping off the source and letting it re-gauge faster than you're using. So now because this is random, it's not as easy. If I wanted to actually do something with this spike, you know, charge another battery or something, it's not as easy as just connecting this into a transformer and going because any load essentially will uh, nullify the effect. So a thing you need to take into condition is if you want to harvest this, it's going to have to be through a very high Z system, which means a very high impedance so that you're not stressing the input. Now, um, one issue with that is um, obviously you will have very little power to work with. It's not a power we want. And it's random, so it's going to have to be broadband. So you're going to have to use like a broadband, something like this here. So by, by being conical, conical here, it gives us a broadband response. This would be like running a Tesla coil in reverse, you see. This would be your high Z side. And whatever you'd get here would be... See, the, that's the issue. We don't have a lot to work with. So this might be like a quarter of a volt or something, but you'd end up getting real current there if you see the drift. And I'm just using this. This is not commercial quality power. It's just because it's all happening at 1.2 volt or so, right? So, but if you were to scale this up at hundreds of volts, you see where I'm getting at, right? So feed it into the high Z side, running a Tesla coil, but broadband in reverse. So you capture all those. So no matter what here, there's going to be a resonance spot for those spikes is what I'm getting at. And you let the regular basically transformer-like action. This is more like an auto transformer configuration. But you see what I'm getting at. And this is how you generate basically using this kind of a crude setup. Again, there's like a million ways of going at it, folks. So the key here is just figuring out how to keep your potential well going. And this is not what operates the load. You power the potential well, and it's the displacement between potential differences, usually through a transformer, which we then convert to wheel current, do the work, and let that power a load. Like Tom Bearden would say, let the gradient difference do the work, and just take care of keeping the potential well high. That's it. So essentially, very simplified, with an electret in this case as our trigger potential well, but just to show you the effect and how you could basically um, capitalize on these random spikes without, because people, you know, it's resonance is difficult in a system like this. So it's very random, so you need a broadband response. And Tesla hinted at that as well with the conical setups. So just thought I'd share that and uh, just food for thought. And again, just to sh show you folks that I'm still around, still alive and experimenting, just a little stalled here um, for the big stuff as I'm waiting for commercial space. So with that said, I uh, hope everyone has a nice day and thank you for watching.